3rd, 2019 work session. Silence, shut off your cell phones, and join us in the pledge. Please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> all right, we all survived this year, the Labor Day weekend. What a wonderful weekend it was in Lake County. Um, we do have <clears throat> some additions to the agenda. We have, uh, I'll just let Melanie go over. Melanie, you want to go over the additions we have? Yep. We have an MOU with Lake District Wellness and Recovery Center with Lake County District Attorney's Office. Ken Kessner will be here later, and he's asking you to designate a representative to class, the class board of directors. And we have an MOU from Jake Beer, the Lake County Community Justice and Climate County Sheriff's Office. Okay, and so, um, looking at our agenda, uh, <coughs> Winters is not here yet, so. But I see someone who's here. <laughs> Are you presenting for Francine? No, no, um, no. She's uh, right after Francine at nine thirty. Okay, so well, both both those items are timed. So, yeah. so Kathy, in case other people are coming, I'd like to wait till the time. Okay. Part of it. So, no problem. Let's um, <clears throat> let's go on down the agenda. Just that, remember, today's a work session. Uh, our decisions are usually made tomorrow. So. MOU Lake District Wellness and Recovery Center with Lake County District Attorney's Office uh, ratification. So we do have that to probably take care of today because it's ratification. Yes. Melanie, was anybody coming down for that or anything? Um, yeah, but she knew I had two presentations, so she wasn't planning on coming down. Okay, so later. we'd like to hold that off for just a little while. If you want. We're, we're doing normal government work, we're delaying everything. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we'll go down the next one. Jake, MOU Lake uh, Community of Justice and Climate Sheriff. And uh, we'll do the, well, they're both on their quads. Um, both of those are the same or are those different? I see it as, a, as a addition. And yes, it is an addition. Um, I got it done at the end of the week. Um,
and we have a great working relationship. Sheriff Caber in my department, you know, Sheriff Caber used to conduct our polygraphs for us. So you can sheriff where you can already establish that relationship. So Yeah, we're just um, run a little behind because he he was so busy. It actually has been in effect since July one. Absolutely. So this is right since July one. Yeah. And we've been using our beds. He didn't waver from that at all. Whether this was a place or not, we kept using our beds. So we're good to go. Very good. Questions, uh, we can act on it tomorrow, but uh, okay. I may not be here tomorrow. Good. I have an appointment at Ben yep. tomorrow afternoon, so we're trying to get time to get out of here. I, I don't think there's going to be any more questions. I think yeah. all three of us know the value of it. So. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So that's the only thing you had, Jake. We had you down here twice as an addition and as that. So that, that's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. They're both so the I'm same just, thing. Yeah. Okay. So mark that off there. Thank, Thank you very much. I'll see him on it twice. Up on additions. No. Oh, okay. All right. You might not have the updated. Uh, <laughs> All right. Uh, Are you a DA? Mr. Kessner's not here. Um, First you, Amendment OHA no. agreement. Uh, you Title do? 10 uh, funding. Under the department head for adult and juvenile. Um, um, that is. <coughs> Is anybody going to speak on that? Uh, person in the Oregon Health Authority, 1921 our governmental agreement for financing public health services. So Judy uh, Clark brought that to me last week. The state has provided um, reproductive services funding in the past. They will no longer <coughs> be providing that money. So now it's coming from the federal government to, for public health to provide reproductive health services. Same amount of money, um, it's just coming from a different source. Okay, and so the, so it's a First Amendment and it's been ran by legal counsel. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's questions? Any questions? It's basically just the state's not willing to do its job, so the federal government has to do it. <laughs> I, I thought you might mention that. <laughs> All right. Sam. Um, right away easement, uh, new sun is, uh, anybody here or anybody want to come on that or anything either? No. Um, so. This is the one that we carried forward. We've already mm -hmm. had some discussion. Yeah, that's the one we tabled last meeting and I had the language revised to take out of the consideration. And so that's been cleaned up and it's the. Cruise Solar Easement, it's 1.5 miles that runs along Cruise Road. Okay. And Kevin, our road superintendent, has approved it, and legal counsel said it's So well, the road had no problem with it after it had been revised, and legal counsel seemed to revision. All right, so that's back on tomorrow also. Question, Brad? Yes. When are the uh, representatives from state government due? Okay, the <coughs> representative and the senator will be doing a town hall at 6 o'clock tonight down in the Memorial Hall. And then tomorrow they will be doing a presentation and update on the legislative session and the, and the short session that's going to be going on tomorrow to the Board of Commissioners. And mm -hmm. or they're the very first thing tomorrow? Yeah. Yep. Oh, oh I see. On the fourth there. They make their presentation. Yeah. They make their presentation. Okay. Yeah. But there's a town hall tonight at six, six o'clock, six to eight. And which? Six. Six. In, in the memorial hall down there. And yeah. Eight. That's a great opportunity for you to have them all three at one time on their Just on their. some chewing. Uh, yep. Question <laughs> and answer. Right Just that time. Time chew you. <laughs> well, that three will be here. There will be Senator Lithicum, Representative Reski. There will be four, actually. Vicki, um, Vicki Breeze. Yeah, yeah. Breeze. Yeah. Representative Mike. And Senator Newman. Warner Reski. So about four. Um, Senator Ben uh, sent out an apology. He's yeah. been out of the country and just could not quite make this. So Senator Lithicum as well. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So four out of the five will be at the town hall tonight. Unless anybody's heard anything different. That's at six, you said? Yep, six. Yep. Yep. That's, yep. That's the ones I want to see. 
You mean we're, we're just not high enough up the totem pole ring? <laughs> I think that's about the size of it. All you right, guys can't sir. help me. I've always a already asked you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, good luck with them tonight. Right? Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, there's going to be some luck. My license didn't expire until 26. Yeah. And I'm going to ask the governor to reinstate them. Well, good luck with them. The young won't help me. They won't even send me the form they say I need. Ask them twice. She lied to me and then she hung up on me. Well, good luck. I'll probably see you there tonight at 6. Yeah. All right. All right. See you, Ray. Take, Take care. care. Yeah. Thank you. So, looking. Uh, hey, Brian. Yeah. Hang on. Do you want me to see if Caitlin's available? Yeah. Talk about the services, like, Absolutely, I would say. I just get ready to look back through the, the thing here. Um, okay. Was there, I know they're probably swamped today coming back from the holiday, too. Um, oh, here's coming. Nope, it's on our way. Okay, good morning. Hi there. I'm sorry, gentlemen. I didn't know I was needed this morning. Oh, you're fine. Oh, no. Oh, no. We, we've all been had a very busy weekend, so okay. we're just... Uh, Are you ready for me to come to the hospital? Absolutely, Kate. Okay. Right I'm so ready. sorry. No, you're fine. Um, so what I had for you today, um, we were able to get a signature from um, Charlie, the CEO for the hospital, on a memorandum of understanding um, for us to move forward in working out how, I, how we would be able to partner um, for the VOCA and CFA grant, which is what I talked with you guys about last time I was here. So thank you, Commissioner Albertson, for coming in at the last <coughs> time on Friday to get the signature. I, I appreciate that. And I apologize it was last minute. It was okay. one of those things where all coming together at the last minute to get the grant um, submitted. But essentially what the MOU states is that we are going to be working out <coughs> essentially how we can partner in order to serve victims of crime with um, mental health care services. So we know that's a need. Um, this Because we got such a large allocation for this grant, we had this like unbudgeted amount and we're like, how can we use that? We talk out of both sides of our mouth of like, we need money for this rural area. And then we're like, well, we can't spend the money. So we did not want to get into that conversation with the state. So we're like, how can we spend this money and serve citizens um, and victims in our um, county. So we are working out how exactly we can under what's allowable for the VOCA grant, but essentially it'll be around like counseling and therapy services for victims. Um, there's also, they can, they can get into substance abuse treatment if that's part of the victimization that's been happening or occurred. Um, so we have a lot of details to work out as far as what those mean, what that means and what the what the wellness and recovery center can provide. We have to figure out a referral process. We have to work out the, you know, confidentiality piece. We all have confidentiality um, rules that we have to abide by. So we just have to work some of that out. Um, so when I come before you the next time, it'll be with a grant agreement, but along, along with a contract for services that we'll be, ha we'll be getting in place um, with the wellness center. Wellness. Well, I think technically the Lake Health District, but on behalf of the Long Distance Recovery Center. So, any questions? I... We're blaming it all on Commissioner Alverson. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, we do need, need to do a ratification, okay. and we can do that today. And so, mm -hmm. I would entertain a motion to ratify that signature. So. Second, motion's been made and seconded to ratify the uh, the signature for the MOU as done on Friday. Further discussion? I, I just want to point out, uh, <clears throat> this is a unique situation for Lake County and most other counties that have a victim's advocate, much like we do. <clears throat> that victim's advocate provides those services, but because we're a one victim's advocate county, partnering and, and making those services available to us just not referral for mental health services, but as the victims are going through the court process, having someone there with them besides our victim advocate, who who's 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 a, who's a subject matter expert in trauma informed care, 
working with them through the trauma that they're going to be going through, sitting in trial or maybe testifying. It, it's a unique opportunity for Lake County. Um, not very many counties have this ability. So kudos to Caitlin and the District Attorney's Office for making this happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you, Caitlin. I don't think we need any more discussion after that. No, I mean, All in you. favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you very much, Caitlin. Thank you, gentlemen. I'm thank you, Jake, for those comments. See ya. All right. So <coughs> we're down to timed items. One well, no show. <coughs> so early. So is there any liaison updates or any updates from anybody? Hmm? I'm gonna, I'm gonna put Melanie on the line real fast. Any updates on our parking lot, our reorganization, uh, trying to open up this parking lot for more public use, especially on the <coughs> I know we have some things on order. How are we doing? I've called him three times and he's not called me back. So I'm a little dissatisfied. I'm hoping that the fence panels will be here this week, but I don't know. I don't know. He hasn't given me a tracking number yet and he said he shipped it Monday, last Monday. So I'm expecting it any day, but I'm that's not unusual where we live for things right. to take a while to get I, here. I understand. I wish we would have had it in for the 100 year roundup, but it, it'll, it'll still be nice yep. once we have it done. Yep. Uh, other stuff, uh, working through, uh, you're working through everything from the camera mm -hmm. to get reorganization yeah. uh, for specific designated parking. So we opened this up for public parking, our employee parking. Parking. Um, I know we've <coughs> had many times we all get hit from the public trying to open it up here mm -hmm. for the businesses and everything. So, Melanie, I just want to commend you for working on that with the department heads, elected officials. There's going to be those roller coasters of people that don't want to walk the extra 40 feet, but it'll be fine. So, I, I appreciate everything you're doing. So, yeah. we we get to make the decisions. You get to make it work. So. <laughs> um, with that, I would just like to, myself, and, uh, the fair, the roundup, the derby, everything was just exceptional this weekend. The presence of, of our PO people, our sheriff down at the event and around, I think, was a very positive, very positive thing. Jake, thank you for some of your employees making walkthroughs and everything. I think it helped set the tone for some people that want to go sideways. I never heard of anything too bad, you know, for Labor Day weekend, but uh, the sale for the kids and all that, just incredible this year. So, Roundup Association, Fair, everybody, kudos to them all. There's always the roller coasters up and down and emotions, but um, went off pretty well. Yeah. And the parade, my God. And thousands of hours of volunteer from the fair and the Roundup Association, <coughs> Joseph Utley getting Christians in here. Yep. It was pretty awesome. Yep. It was just good. It was very good. So, yeah. um, the airport's resurfacing is going well. They ran into us a few places where they had to put extra rock. Are the papers coming in? Do you know? Have you heard yet? They're supposed to be in here within the next few days. So I, I think I think I've told both of you this. If not, I'm I'm going to say it and say it again. The pit south of the town is owned by General Fund. The rock there that is crushing everything is road department, but the pit itself is ours. So when you're looking at these bigger projects and everything. Uh, we always go out to the private sector first for most things, but on our own properties, uh, like if you need base rock and everything, the pit run there might be a little bit of cost for the push up with the cap, but we as a board have control over the rock and uh, that and bunch grass pit it both. So um, just to let you know, if you have to extend runways, you have to do things out there, that's an avenue to be able to use, use that rock, you know. You have to separate from what the road departments put their dollars into, but there's, there's avenues out there. Yeah. 
and uh, I think you both knew that, but maybe not. If you don't, if you, if you did, we don't know. Yeah, yeah, Dave, Dave, Dave was talking a little bit about that too. So yeah. Well, year, years ago we used to charge a ten thousand dollar a year admin for that rock and for another ten thousand for bunch grass. When the road department started, the budget got so tight we waived that over the years. So where's the bunch grass one? It, we haven't used it for years. It's all the way up at North Lake, um, the, the really funny corner. Uh, wow. You know, it's just off out towards the sinks right there. Yeah. Um, but with our new um, our new inline crusher, whenever it gets on, I would think it might be the type of material that might work pretty good for that. But if you're, I've hauled out of it back in the day, but it, it's not the best rock, but it might work for that. But anyways, just want to give you guys an update. Those two. Uh, just log that away in your, your history as commissioners. So that's how that's how it that evolved over the years. Yeah. But yeah, the airport um, did they get the base rock or what? I, well, I don't know the base rock or what you need. You got some extended out there. Yeah, and they they just had a couple soft spots where the water was still right near the surface that needed. Base rock, so they can put you know, resurfacing on it. Very good. <coughs> so, <okay. Awesome. coughs> Let's see. Uh, I wanted to update you guys. October seventh and eighth, um, Bob Schwartz from DEQ will be coming in um, to uh, Christmas Valley, and he'll be holding a public meeting. He's making all the arrangements, and he'll be sending out an email once all those arrangements are finalized. Um, he'd like to have a meeting on the evening of October 7th, around 6.30, 6 o'clock. And then the following day, a site visit where the public would be welcome as well. And uh, that'll probably be sometime after breakfast on October 8th. And that's for the alkali? That is for the alkali lake uh, um, disposal site. And he's wrote, I would assume he's running as a public meeting. He is running that as a public meeting. He will put, be putting ads in the papers. Probably a community center. It'll be a community well. center, most likely. That is where he is attempting to make the arrangements. Very good. Um, so just to kind of keep you guys updated so it's on your radar. Mm -hmm. um, I think, uh, I think the, the public would like to see us there. Um, if not all of us can make it, it is what it is. The site visit should be kind of interesting though as well, and that's open to the public. So, and that'll be advertised well in advance, so we can go out there and take a look if, if so desired. He will also be joined by Tracy England, who will be taking over, I guess, at some point in time for him. Um, he's out of bend. That would be great to make that connection. Correct. I know you're sort of the lead on this and taking some passion towards it, but. If any of us can make that connection with an upcoming DEQ person, that would be great. Yeah, just want to make sure that's on you guys' radar. And, yeah. Okay. So uh, I need to give you guys an update on the railroad, the Chris yes. Grant. Uh, thank you guys so much for um, uh, giving me the leniency to talk with Dave and Ann uh, potential funding as we're looking to get through the, the notice to uh, proceed part of this. We don't have anything to bring to the board yet. Nothing will happen without the board's support. I have set up uh, weekly conference calls with what I call the team, uh, Dave, Ann, and myself, uh, the stakeholders. Um, we had our first meeting Thursday at 8 o'clock in the morning conference call. Uh, went very well, um, really working on uh, on uh, the Chrissy Grand, it's 5.6 million. It has right at a 50% match. Um, the state of Oregon, uh, our legislatures did not fund the 3.12 in the uh, regular session. We have a very, very good shot at in the short session. Uh, as I've updated both of you individually. Is I had a great opportunity to visit with uh, uh, Senator Johnson and uh, Representative McCowan and uh, gain some support there. Uh, so during the short session, we're going to really push on that. So that would fill a lot of that gap of that 50% match. Uh, the sooner we get this uh, notice to proceed, that's not the right word. It's a NEPA in that part. We're mm -hmm. looking to get a categorical exclusion because it's all maintenance right on the railroad. Yeah. And so 
We're trying to get quotes in so it can come before the Board of Commissioners of who we're going to have to get that paperwork done. When that paperwork gets done, then any work that's going on on the Red Rock Spur or work going on on the railroad goes towards that match, which lessens the amount of match. Um, I call it a soft match. Um, some of our liabilities. So working on that, uh, things are starting to come together um, uh, pretty well. Um, working with Larry Holzgang, Business Oregon, uh, he has some <coughs> questions and different things, trying to find every avenue on all that. So um, I will, after another week or two, hopefully have even a better update. Uh, Jeff Manderneck, Red Rocks on the call, Mary Dillon, one of those two are always are going to be on the call. The shippers are on the call. Um, so, um, who do you have from uh, um, the Perlite and Collins that are on the call? Yes. Yeah. D Brown was on the call. Bruce was in person and actually sat here oh, on the so. call. Okay. And, and um, Toby was on the call. Mm -hmm. So we're pulling together all the key players um, to try to have the best presentation to the board as we go forward with this. That's a great opportunity, it's just finding that match and making sure it's right. And then, so what, we'll, what we're looking at doing is getting, uh, come before the board with um, the cost for that, get through the NEPA process. And then we would look at going out for a full RFP for a, a project manager that would take and, and take this through the process because of when you're dealing with FRA and federal dollars and all this, it's it's a lot. We have a lot of expertise here, but we need that yep. project manager. And so, just an update on that. Um, be sure to talk to Dave and mm -hmm. even ask me what I'm doing on the things. Um, I'm going to be working very closely with Representative Reske on this, and he's going to be the lead. And so, he has to be able to tell the story to the legislature. Yeah. So, um, anyways, it's a, a lot of extra time and work, but it's positive time. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I know you spent a little bit of time with Caitlin over the weekend. I did too. Um, yeah, we. Caitlin from uh, Congress of Walton's office. I'm sorry. Yeah. Caitlin Pay. Yeah. Yeah. She. We went to the Derby. And had her for breakfast, and we went to the parade, and she enjoyed herself. And introduced her to quite a few people. Don't be afraid of your microphone. Oh, no, sir. I'm hard here. <laughs> I introduced her to quite a few people, and it was good to have her here. So. Very good. All right, well, I don't think we're going to get uh, the other two people to show up. But we do have Kathy Miles here from the Youth Mentor Program. Mm -hmm. Kathy, you might as well come up. And if right, you guys have right. other liaison stuff, we can come back to it. I don't, yeah, no, um, no we're, we're good. All right. I just want to disclose that I'm on the board of the Mentors Program. And so I want to disclose that. So, yeah. Yes. Thank you. We, and thank you for that. We do cross over on many things. We're asked to be on many different boards and many different advisories and stuff. So with that, Kathy, welcome. Thank I don't you. think I've ever seen you before. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, I do have uh, our budget that I couldn't send to Melanie because it had to be approved on Thursday <laughs> real fast. Um, so I can give you a copy of what we're looking at, and Melanie, I'll get you one because I didn't think. Um, you know I'm coming back from retirement. Uh, I do now. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll give you a copy of this if you, uh, so you can kind of follow along and see what I'm doing. Um, I'm interim. Just so you know, I'm the interim director. I was the director for seven years and decided it was time to let someone else try to take it on and um, the director quit a few weeks ago, and Jack Thompson at the ESD asked me if I'd come back on an interim basis and help out, especially considering that Brianna, the, co the coordinator, just had her baby on Sunday. So oh, did she? She did. Oh, and good. so I'm a little bit on my own 
for a while until we can get a new director hired. Um, when I came in, the first thing I looked at was the budget because yes. that's pretty important. Yeah. Um, we are, James, I don't know how much you know about the program, but we are a grant funded program. And what he's told me pretty much. Yeah, so, so we, we rely on a lot of grants and um, we have the, I call it the juvenile crime prevention because that's what it was when I was here, but it's now I guess the Oregon Early Learning Council, which is Jake um, through his funds and we have $27,000 as I understand it. We had a grant from the Oregon Community Foundation Trailblazers for $10,000. She, um, Leanne Davis, she, the, uh, re the director who resigned, submitted a budget or a grant to the Collins Foundation for $25,000, which we won't know about until the end of October. And um, she did not come to the commissioners in the time, timely fashion as we have done in the past. The commissioners have supported us, I don't know how many years, Brad, you probably know that better than me right at this point. Um, quite, quite a few, and you're saying that well, it's supposed to come during budgeting time. Yes, so, yes. Yeah. But, but anyway, and, and that's, that's one of the things that I brought forward at our meeting is, you know, that it's way easier for us to plan if they come to us in the springtime yeah. before we budget. Yes. So, well, I honestly, as we've supported over the years, was for it to be a standalone. So I assumed when they didn't come before us is that you were in a different place than you are right now. But anyways, no. let's not worry about the past. <laughs> yeah. let, let's the go past forward. The past has happened, and yeah. so that should have been done and wasn't. Um, and then we... Um, are going to have to use a carryover fund. We have a contingency fund, but we're going to have to use almost half of it this year because some things weren't done. Um, and as you know, having a contingency fund is important because so you're calling the carryover your contingency. Yep. And That's our so contingency you're saying you're going to have to use half of it, but yes. if, but if the twenty-five thousand to five thousand comes in, then you wouldn't have to. By looking at your budget here. No. We I would use half carry. of it, but we would still use some of it. Yeah. Uh, we would have to use this $53,000. Unless we can do um, under our business. Oh, I, I see. Included in that, you balance with the full right. use of yes. the 53, the right. inclusion of the 30. Correct. I, yeah. Yeah. Ouch. Yes. Jake, go ahead. Can I ask a question? Does your new budget reflect the additional uh, $6,775 that's coming in from JCP funds? Um, you told me $54,000? Well, it's, oh, it's $54,000 for two years, $27,000 right. a year. Right. The difference from last last biennium, each year uh, the mentoring program received $20,000, uh -huh. $225. This, this fiscal year, with the $27,000, it's $27,000 each fiscal year for a total of 54000 So the difference is a, a positive $6,775. It, it does, right. does reflect twenty seven. Yeah, it's 27000 in the budget. Okay, so I brought that before the board last last meeting two weeks ago. Um, I brought that before the board maybe a month ago. The board had, the board had approved that. Okay, so, so that's what I was saying. So we're still looking for another five. Do you got any other? <laughs> <laughs> Um, um, the one thing I will tell you, and then our business donations and fundraising, and I'm really confident on that number of 20000 because we go out into the community and we get, I, I would be quite shocked if we didn't get twelve to $15,000 in business, sh business sponsorships. Brianna, as soon as she gets back from that baby, is an amazing fundraiser. And she is going to easily be able to come up with this. We'll have some events. I'm headed to Ace Hardware right after this because Dan has agreed to, I know this might be controversial somewhere, but not in Lake County, um, we're going to be doing a gun raffle. And Dan has Woo agreed to work with us on that. So um, that's already, and then we have our annual dinner, which we should bring in anywhere from four to $5,000 easily on that. And not to mention anything we do in the interim that Brianna comes up with. Um, 
we're working with KORB, they're going to try to do some things with us. So I'm pretty confident in the budget that I have submitted to you, along with your uh, 5000 if you were so gracious as to give it to us. The ESD will match that, and um, where they do that is they take away from um, the dues that we have to pay an administrative fee because we, while we are a part of the ESD, we're really not in the sense that we're all grant funded, no funding comes from the ESD. They have agreed to waive um, some of the fees that were charged for being there. So um, we're currently in the Metro program, and the reason I'm back is there have been some challenges, and I'm going to make them work. <laughs> I just am. <laughs> That's what I do. Um, I think the program is so important to this community. Um, our mentors' numbers are down. I hope to bring that up within the next month, month and a half, um, a little bit. I go out and I beat the bushes, and if I see you on the street, I say, would you like to be a mentor? And then I try to make you feel bad if you tell me no. <laughs> um, I've, I've never experienced that at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, you haven't. Still so far, I haven't gotten you, but that's OK. Um, <laughs> You're targeted now. Yeah. Oh, I've been targeted yeah. for years. Um, and just for your knowledge, James, too, we are a countywide program. Yes. So we service North Lake with a team mentor program because we actually found North Lake does not work with one-on-one -on -one because of the vast area that people are in and a little hesitant to be a part of a program mm -hmm. um, some people but our team mentor program in North Lake is amazing Cindy Reed um, Sheriff Shim Wade yeah. they're two of our main people working up there I met last week with Liberty uh, Hendrix that's her, um, in Paisley yes uh, she lives in Summer Lake apparently but she does she runs the Paisley program for us. And so we're also working with the high school, um, a program that I have to go find out just a little bit more about uh, is where we have teens going into the elementary school at breakfast talking to kids. So I want to go find out what that is and get a little bit more on the numbers. I will be applying for a Ford Family Foundation grant um, and a, a couple others that I want to look at to get the grants back up to where we can breathe a little easier than we can this year. Um, it's a tough year. It's going to be a tough year. So if, if this board tomorrow found, found money mm -hmm. and we were able to make this happen, would you be willing to, some of those mentors, come and do presentations to us occasionally just so they get some experience, maybe speaking to a board and maybe that will help them in life? Or something like that. Some of the kids. The, the, oh, the, you want some of the kids? Yeah, not the I, mentors, but the kids. Yeah. You want the kids? Yeah. Um, yeah, sure, I could. I do want to tell you, I'm only going to be here two months. <laughs> I hope. Okay. Um, so, praying somebody applies for well, that job. Well, well, we have you. <laughs> but, but, but no, that, that's great, Kathy. But you know, um, but yes, I, I will pass it on. As we invest in our youth, sometimes if they just set through a meeting or have to come up and do a little presentation Absolutely. of how it's been positive for them, maybe right. that makes a difference in their life later yes. on too. Yes, and we have done that in the past with Rotary, and, and I will pass along one note. I was at the Derby uh, Sunday night and turned around and here's a young lady sitting behind me who had been in the program and graduated, and she, she was one of our first um, she came from a home that was interesting, we'll use that word, and um, she's now an assistant manager at Bank of America in Portland, and she told me had it not been for the mentor program, she doesn't think she would have made it. So it is making positive impacts, and Absolutely. I would hate to see this program not work. Um, I have offered to Jack that I will also be available for some consulting, uh, not too much because the budget's tight, but um, that I would be willing to help whoever is hired as director. And, and we do have it advertised right now. Had to put the new advertisement out because we had the wrong salary and we were not, I mean, who wants to do this for $13 an hour? You know, that was what it was listed at and no one really wants to be the director for $13 an hour because it's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. So, um, but we have it back out now, and we've had a couple people 
have contacted us to talk about it. And so we're hoping to draw some, it's a 40 hour a week job with benefits, as long as they keep getting grants to pay their salary. Well, you know, that's not unusual for a lot of the nonprofits and everything is right. it's grant driven and the director has to work really hard to yes. get those to operate. So. Yeah. So it is my goal to make sure that this program continues and that it's not just left to die because I think that would be one of the saddest things that would happen in this community because we have helped quite a few kids. Yes. We've had up to 30 kids on the program at one time or another and so um, I'd like to see it continue. It's my baby. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much, Kendra. So, we'll take it under consideration. Uh, we'll check on where we might be able to leverage some funding. It's very tough whenever it gets past our budget time, you know that. I do. Um, this board's pretty creative. Um, we're, the, I'll speak for the whole board, we're very supportive of our youth in Lake County. So, um, I do want to say thank you for coming back okay. and helping us in this time, because it's been a tough spot. So. Yeah. As long as I get to go back to that retirement, because I was kind I of enjoying it. I can't promise you that. <laughs> really well, I, I know you. Whenever you do it, you do it all or nothing. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Appreciate I, I did a little March. Just thank you for coming back. You're welcome. Yeah. We'll make it work. Thank you. Right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Absolute pleasure seeing you again. Yeah. <laughs> Take care. Say hi to your husband. I will. Say hi to my uncle, or my, my brother-in-law. I will. <laughs> he, I hopefully he did better this weekend. <laughs> yes. Take care. Thanks. Perfect timing, Mr. Kessner. We, uh, Kathy Miles ten. just got done. Come on up. <laughs> and I'll pay that 10 o'clock? Uh, there it wasn't a timed item. Um, okay. So, do you have other people coming? Do you want it no, to no. be 10 o'clock? No, no. I just thought if it was paid at 10, then we should keep it at 10. No, no, there was no time. We only had two timed items. So. Okay. Uh, septic is uh, Cla uh, Climate Lake Community Action Service, and they were reorganizing, and they should have had before this time, but they didn't. A tripartite board of directors, meaning a group on underserved, low, low income folks, a person on the board from uh, an elected official and a, another group of Jetson or business. And we don't, the board of directors does not have anybody from the elected uh, position. And they ask if Lake County would be interested in either one of you gentlemen or to name a representative to fill us on. It's required by the uh, uh, community service block grant, better funds, to have a tripartite board of directors. So that's the request is if one of you guys want to be on the board of directors or appoint somebody as your representative. Okay, so I haven't seen their bylaws. You did say it's a community it's a, service block grant requirement? Yes. Didn't they, didn't they mention that when they were here? Yeah. Yeah. I, I was in touch with Christina just last night. I sent an email off to her with recommendation from our legal counsel in regards to uh, signing on some of those things. But uh, they do have a tripartite board, and that board requires up to one third of it needs to be an elected official. Um, it has to be on that board, either one or two elected officials, one could be from Climate, one could be from Lake. Um, up to one third of the board, though, and I believe there are six positions. Yeah. And it could be from, well, it says elected official. That could be a town council, but the emphasis is to get a county because class covers the whole county and not just the town. Yeah, I, um, I know James has been doing quite a bit of work. You as an elected uh, member of the hospital board, you would feel you fit part of that as a hospital representative onto a class. One of us would fit it as uh, elected official. Um, there are many different uh, people throughout the county. I know I haven't visited with Klamath County for a little while, 
both counties are struggling with a little bit with uh, taxes coming to us and said we're responsible as a governing, uh, governing authority in this. So I know James has been working on it some with our legal counsel. Uh, Donnie Boyd's been working, Commissioner Boyd's been working in Klamath County. So right now, I, I don't know unless James has something to bring forward, um, something we can consider. I, when, I, when I mailed, um, I emailed uh, Christina last night, um, my, re my full response was basically that if she wanted to get together, she actually sent me an email, she wanted to get together in person. Uh, either she would come over here or I would go over there and we would try and work this out. And I got in touch with Jim Bailey, um, kind of went back and forth there a little bit, trying to figure out what would be the best course of action. And I figured once we kind of work out what exactly is being asked, not just having a position on the tripartite board, but also um, in the signing of that document in order for them to be able to get that funding, I need to know the full liability and responsibility that our county would be taking on. And once that's made clear, not just to myself, but the rest of the board, I told Christina that I would be more than happy to either travel to Klamath um, or anywhere needed um, and try to find a solution for this. And then I would be willing to call for a special session if necessary um, with the rest of the board. And we could find a solution from there and look at our options. So, um, I, I knew that you'd been doing this by the way, so thank you. There, there's, there was a lot to go through with, uh, I had to go through their actual grant and look for actual specifications where they require uh, the county's um, involvement in order to acquire their grant. And Jim Bailey and I were kind of shooting that back and forth and trying to find what exactly, their first, the first paper that was brought to us and I believe we all saw that it was very vague, very general, as to, and and Raise red general. Flags. But yeah, and, and just <laughs> when you see phrases like responsibility and liability yeah. uh, onto the county, but it's not clear as to what that is, um, and given the history that class has had um, in with prior directors and and where things have gone with that, where they're still trying to sort through a lot of their stuff. Um, it was very, I personally had a great deal of um, just caution uh, kind of going through this, and I don't think that the board really felt comfortable judging from our last meeting um, at this point in time with well, signing on to any full agreement. That's, that's sorry, Jake had a question. I'm sorry. Yeah. <coughs> All right, not a question, just a comment. I think it's important that, um, that the county board of direct or board of commissioners is involved um, with with, uh, with community corrections and the prison and this wood program. Classes struggle keeping someone full time involved with energy assistance, and that's and that deals with our most um, um, oh well, our, our seniors, our most uh, the folks that need it the most. So we we haven't had. Anything steady, so trying to work with the folks on the ground in Klamath and understanding our needs over here hasn't always proven to be a, a good working relationship. Um, <clears throat> so having that voice to keep someone here locally involved with energy assistance is going to be huge, and that's one thing whoever may join that board uh, I would ask to continue to hammer home is we need someone here on the ground doing energy assistance. Well, instead of they, 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 they have a job of our position open right now, um, and so that they're working on that. My issue is, is I need to look back at whenever we completely went away from class as a board of commissioners, and, and Ken, you were on at the time, if I remember right. Um, uh, the, the unanimous consent for dissolution of Klamath and Lake Community Action Program was signed in, in uh, 2009. Um, by okay, all so three you, you commissioners know. from Klamath, none of which are in office at this point, um, and then all three commissioners here in the lake. Um, with Dan, with Commissioner Shown, uh, Dan Shown, uh, yourself, and, and Mr. Gessner. Yeah, and, and whenever we have done that, uh, there, there was, we were advised from legal counsel whenever we done that, so as you're working with our legal counsel and everything, uh, we need to reflect on 
on that and make sure that we're not going against the decisions made or if they're if we do want to go back if that's yeah, we can always reevaluate yeah that's what we need to yeah. do and so that's that thank you for looking yeah. that up i haven't read that lately so i don't know yeah it was 10 years ago i yeah. understand but <laughs> <laughs> i get it <laughs> you know and so i i'm uh, Melanie was actually kind enough to, to pull this up for me, yeah. and uh, so, uh, so we've been kind of going over this stuff to try and find a solution. And class does have a position open. They actually want to eventually hire two full-time positions here in Lake County. That'd be good um, because the last yeah. we we had this agreement with class for two or three years, and during those two or three years, they probably have four or five different employees in that position, and, uh, and the change always happens right during the middle of the winter. Or late fall, early winter. <laughs> so we're we're slow and yeah. without by then. Yeah. Well, piled regarding up. energy assistance, like yeah, yeah. So that's we're trying thing. to. Well, I would be I'm really surprised. In this. I'd be really surprised if they have the funds. If they were really look at the budget to put two people in Lake County, that they'll probably start with one. Yeah, now, because of over the years, just getting energy assistance here, there wasn't even enough administrative dollars to get it on the ground, hardly at all. Yeah. I'm talking several years ago, so it may have changed today, and, and, but it usually complements our senior center really well, and maybe maybe the way they're working with our senior center where they do some administrative work or something, because they deal with those energy assistant things used to the lot, I don't know. And, and in their defense, I think part of this grant that they're actually applying for, that they can't acquire some of those other funding until they have the actual county sign off on some of these things, um, some of those funds are actually for that specific yeah. purpose. Well, I think it's prudent for us to do our cautiously go forward because of there has been um, failure in the past. Um, yeah. we, we want the services, we want our citizens to get all the services they can. Um, we got to be cautious about the liability to the, the county at the same time as you're working on. And I think you actually stated it in one of our last meetings where you actually said, you know, we, we want to be supportive of class and we have been supportive of class, but to what degree our responsibility is, that that remains to be clarified. Yep. So. And, and irregardless of energy assistance position here, the wood's still going to be delivered. We, yeah. we see the need. We, we just, we've entered into agreements with class in the past and it hasn't. The working relationship hasn't been good um, because of the, the high turnover and that not only here in, in Lakeview but also from Klamath and a lot of miscommunication that's not getting the information we need um, to deliver the firewood. You're justified why we're moving ahead cautiously. Thank you. <laughs> and so, and but we will, we will continue to deliver firewood. That's it. One of the one of the reasons that class made a complete turnover in the management section. <clears throat> so anyway, for consideration, and it's not just uh, energy assistance, it's many different programs that I encourage you to kind of yeah. but, uh, One of their primary funding is the is, um, CSBG, and it requires a track parking. Mm -hmm. So it's either a commissioner on it or somebody you designate to be on it. They recommended that, since I'm already on it, I could do that designation, but that's for you guys to decide. Thank you. So, anyway, food for thought. Yep. Appreciate you all doing the research on it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you bet. Thanks, Thank you. Ken. Back to other business. Yeah. All right, so um, apparently Francine Winters is not coming today. I'd say that's a safe assumption. Safe assumption. <laughs> is there anything else to come before us? <laughs> we, we, you're the only one we haven't put on the hot seat yet. Oh, you could have gotten alert since. Uh, Pardon me? I have not heard anything back. I, I, I talked to a person two weeks about that. And it appeared when uh, the deputy came and spoke to you about your uh, emergency alert sense. Yeah. Alert sense. It sounds like we are leaning towards going with the version, and I can't remember the name of it. That the state police or in the state of Oregon is the version that was too expensive. I can't remember the name of it. So I haven't given up talking about how we can support the local county. 
with that since we're in Blake County. So, all right. Okay. Um, just a little further discussion on the mentor program um, between now and tomorrow. I, I'm assuming both of your support we need to come up with where we find that kind of money non-budget time. Um, there's there's places we can go. We can do a grant out of our uh, loan program. We can look at um, the economic development video lottery dollars. We've been hitting it pretty hard. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little hesitant to go there. Yeah. Uh, the you know it, it's tough when they come before you whenever it's budget. Everything's already budgeted. Um, my my projections on uh, our budget as commissioners. I don't know. I, I don't have a projection on that. How we're going to come out on that? We got some pretty major traveling and different things coming on this year. Um, so I guess we get right back down to maybe the community development loan program. As we we do as a board of commissioners have the ability to grant some monies out of there. So that's. That's a consideration. If you guys want to talk to Ann individually, yeah. um, I would like to find a way to support them tomorrow. Um, just, just so you guys know where I stand. Yeah. No, I think I think there's a consensus. I'm just gonna rebut it. Me being on that board, and I'm okay. also I'm also a mentor. I just I wanted you guys to kind of take the lead on this one. Okay. Just because I'm I'm involved so deep in. In it, I don't want it to. Be careful, you're going to admit you're the problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be honest with you, not, I'm not really you. thankful. I'm really thankful that Kathy came on board and helped us out. And well, I, yeah, yeah. I, did, I didn't mean anything by that because right. I know you're working to get it corrected and everything. As a board member, you're working very hard, and I. Speak for James and me both. We understand. We'll take the lead on. So what are the uh, so what are some of the different places that we can look aside from the lottery dollars? Uh, the community development loan. It's yeah. the revolving loan program we have. Did you and mention it, another one though? Um, <coughs> I just was talking about our general budget overall okay. as the commissioners, um, and it might be a blend of the two if we wanted to go there. But I think. Our projections were probably right on our projections, so I'd be cautious about going yeah. there. I think, I think the place to go would be. Uh, we very rarely do it, but for the kids, the grant <coughs> would be acceptable. I mean, the one thing I will say is there is a huge need for mentors and mentorship uh, in our community, and you know to. To have some kid come alongside you, or you come alongside some kid to help them. You know, not everybody was raised with the privilege that we were raised. You know, of having our folks around and, and that. And uh, so it, it's really important. Yep. So. And and also it's worth just noting that the DSD will match any funds that we award. Yep. And well, so just, that was pretty huge. I hadn't heard that one yet. Yeah. And so I, I have not been a mentor, but I have emceed the dinners and done fundraisers and that part of it. We all sort of get involved at a hot level we're able to. So um, anyways, it's, it's a very, very good program. But I, I would like to see they judge which kids would be beneficial for them to come and give us an update over a year. I think I think that's just another, if they, they can judge which kids that maybe they're going to uh, be public speakers or something, not putting pressure on the kids, but the opportunity to come speak to us. Absolutely. So, anyways, uh, any other discussion on any, any of the other items? Go ahead. Um, I'm, is this being recorded right Yes, now? it is. Yep. All right. Well, Do you want to adjourn? I can fill the board in some things that happened this weekend, but I don't want it. Um, I want it, okay. So, um, so, the camera. so it's um I can just come individually Yeah, yeah so it's ten o'clock. There's no further updates to the Board of Commissioners. Um
tomorrow we'll bring back uh, the things that are necessary. And we'll adjourn at 10 o'clock. Thank you. Thank you.